Digimon, the movie, the blog, part seven, oldies but goodies. So, full disclosure, there were jokes in the movie that Bob and I had done in other projects for years and years and years. Bob and I met at an improv comedy theater in the Valley called The LA Connection. And they had a little TV show on Nickelodeon for a few seasons, I really don't know how many, called Mad Movies. And Bob was a cast member and writer of that group. And what they did was they took old movies and they would take away all the sound and dub new dialogue into the uh, characters' mouths. And then after the Mad Movies TV show, they still did a live version of that show. And I joined the writing staff for new projects. After that TV show, we had our own pilot with me in the cast. And we also did just these live shows all over the country. And this is when Bob and I broke off to start our own little company called Spliced Bread, which now Bob runs on his own. We uh, did this uh, for our work with NFL Films. We would take all the uh, footage from NFL Films of football players and what's going on in a foot during the course of a football game. And we would dub new comic dialogue into people's mouths. And this is what we won our Emmy for. So in so many of those projects, the movie dubbing and the NFL dubbing, certain jokes just always worked. And one of those jokes was the three bean salad joke in Digimon the movie, where she says, uh, I'll make a three bean salad. And uh, Izzy or Ty says, no, thanks. And she says, oh, that's okay. I only had two beans anyway. Uh, It was ridiculous, but it always got a big laugh, no matter how we told it. And if someone held up like three fingers in any project we worked on, we tried to work that joke in. And when we knew Ty's mom was a bad cook, we knew we had to start thinking about her making a three bean salad somewhere. So another oldie but goodie was uh, telling a joke so old, like from pre-Vaudeville days, that it didn't matter if you screwed it up, you know? Uh, The perfect joke we used a lot was uh, the duck joke. Uh, A guy walks into a bar with a duck. The bartender says, we don't serve pigs. The guy says, it's not a pig, it's a duck. Bartender says, I was talking to the duck. You see, if you just read this and don't hear it, you don't get all the funny little sounds. So, in Digimon the movie, we see a perfect part to use it. Willis says, our Digimon seems to be getting along. And then we see Terriamon sort of holding court with the other Digimon. She just finishes a joke, and she goes, And the guy says, I was talking to the duck. And all the other Digimon laugh. <laughs> It was just perfect footage to use a portion of the duck joke. Like, it didn't matter what the beginning of that joke is. It's just... (laughs) And when we were at the premiere of the movie in Westwood, (laughs) I just heard our sound engineer, Kevin Neeson, I heard him so distinctly in the middle of the crowd. He just, his head went back and he let out a roar. He went, ah, ah, after that joke. It was so funny. Digimon, the movie, part eight, the recording. Huh, finally we start recording. I did the voice directing, and Bob and Terry sat behind me in this big control room in Westwood, California, in the Saban building. And uh, I would pretty much run the session, and if someone behind me wanted a different take, or for whatever reason they wanted, uh, you know, whatever, either they wanted a different take or an opinion, or they wanted to talk to the actor, they would just chime in freely and tell me to hit the talk back button. So we recorded a lot of the series in this building and this room as well. Uh, The biggest difference between the show recordings and the movie recordings was food. Um, The Screen Actors Guild have all kinds of rules for movies as opposed to TV shows. So for the movie, there's this like luscious spread of food every day, plus meals. I mean, the spread was just out there every day. And then they also say, what do you want for lunch? What do you want for dinner? And uh, Joshua Seth, who played Ty, you know, he and I still talk about how the food was that moment we felt we finally arrived in Hollywood. (laughs) Another story I remember mostly from the recording is uh, my old buddy, Neil Kaplan. He came in to record his part. And frankly, 
I fulfilled a dream of his for two years. It was probably the greatest moment of his life, and uh, he has me to thank for it. Uh, he, he'll tell you no different. Ask him. So he'd been bugging me like crazy to do this impersonation of an old-time actor named Edwin. He just wanted to do it somewhere in Digimon, a one character here or, or whatever, a, 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 you know, a little episode story arc character, whatever, a multiple episode story arc character, whatever, somewhere in Digimon where he could do with that win character. Oh, my goodness gracious. He's mostly famous for that young people might know him from the original Mary Poppins. But uh, frankly, most people who remember him are myself, Neil Kaplan, and, you know, everyone else at the old actor's home. But Neil was obsessed with doing this. I mean, it was every time he came in to a session. Is today the day? I never let him do it once. I dismissed it out of hand. But here it is. Digimon the movie, I see a character, he speaks one word. It's an insignificant word. It's the teacher who's giving a test to Joe, and Joe's racing against the clock to get done. As soon as he gets done with it, he can leave, and is racing against the clock, and here's the proctor, the teacher, at the front of the class, and as soon as time is up, he says, finish, that's it. So, at the very end of our (laughs) recording session with Neil, I ask him, uh, Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you just do me, give me one last character? And uh, everything's ready. Are we ready to record? Yes, we're ready. We're rolling. Okay. And I just press the talk back button. I say to Neil, now. And that's all I do. I don't say anything else. I don't say anything else, but now. And the mic goes hot. With You get, you get three beeps. Beep, beep. And then you match your the voice, you know, that's the timing mechanism. Um, but this character had no mouth, so all he had to do was say his line. So, once again, I just pressed the talk back button, I said to Neil, now, nothing else. Beep, beep, beep. And in his best Edwin voice, he screams, FINISHED! And I'm telling you, I don't think he's ever been happier. And to reward me for that moment... He gave me this great R2-D2 cap that I wear all the time in the winter. It's fantastic. And no, I didn't say cat. I said cap because Digimon, the movie, part nine, that damn cat. There was a simple joke that went completely off the rails in Digimon, the movie. And it's a brief moment when Ty scoots his cat from the computer. And, you know, Bob and I... We wanted to squeeze every ounce of funny out of this movie that we could. So we just said, hey, let's have the cat using the internet. So when Ty scoots him away, he's been using the internet. Like he's he's actually signed on and signed on to a website. And we, we didn't have a lot of time to do this with there. So uh, we had to keep it simple. So we just finally, we had the, you know, settled on AOL type voice saying, uh, thanks for visiting. Meow. Dot com. Like that, you know, the meow would say meow.com on screen. It would be written out, but would be a, a site for cats, by cats, for cats. Get it? Ah, <sighs> It was cute. It was funny. Uh, but it turned into a nightmare. I was the first to record the cat's voice. I thought it was a very simple thing to do. I went in the booth, one take. I went meow. And I thought it was over. But Terry loved cats. She loved cats more than anything on earth. I know a lot of people who love cats. Uh, and Terry was one of them. And she wanted me to sound like her cat. But I couldn't sound like her cat. I could only sound like the cat that my friend Jimmy Kane had. <coughs> you know? And uh, she goes, no, 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 let me show you. So she gets in, but you know, she's a producer. She's not really an actress. And she listened back to a few of her takes, but she's like, eh, no. But I don't like yours either. So uh, Dave Mallow just happened to be coming in. And uh, I just gave, really gave it to the next person. Next man up. You know, next person who came into the booth. And he tried. She tried to tell him. Because I think Dave had a cat. And she tried telling him what her cat sounded like. And she was like, let me give give it a couple more tries. And she goes back in more. She does a bunch. And now everyone is sick of their own meows and other people's meows. And we don't, everything we hear now is meow, 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 me
She just tells the ADR dialogue editor, Mike Garcia, Emmy winner Mike Garcia, to pick one. And let's move on with this crazy cat situation. So Mike, Mike and I call each other Boom Boom, you know, Mike Boom Boom Garcia. Because uh, when I hear her take I like, I go, boom. And uh, Mike makes a note. That's the take I want. And he'd reply, boom. So I'd go, boom. He'd go, boom. So we became the Boom Boom twins around the recording of that uh, movie. So much later on, like much later on, after the recording of the movie and everything, we're doing a, like an internal screening of Digimon the movie for Fox execs only. And the cat comes on the screen, and I noticed it right away. I heard the meow immediately, and it was the first meow, the very first take I did before Terry or Dave. I think we even had Sorge. I think we had a few actors try it. And <laughs> I, I recognized my meow immediately, and I, I look around for where Mike is. It, you know, it's, it's the meow.com. And I look around for where Mike is. Now, I'm sitting all the way at the end of one row. And I look around for where Mike is. And he's sitting in my row all the way at the other end. And he's leaning forward, staring at me. So when I make eye contact with him, he's already been staring at me, grinning ear to ear. And he just mouths the word, boom. about NFL films. And that was 20 years ago, okay? Everyone I know there is gone. Or dead. And just go back to anime. You're a superstar in that world. Actor, writer, director. Jeff Nimoy. Mm, it's complicated. I'm with GeekCon. We were wondering if you'd like to be a VIP guest again. I don't really do anime conventions anymore. How does $3,000 sound? Wolfwood is definitely my favorite character of all time. When he died, I cried like a little baby. I cried too. When he died, I was out of a job. Is this pretty much the way you remember it? <laughs> Smells the same. Jeff Nimoy! I'm your biggest fan. Oh, <laughs> you're right. Oh, she's being serious. How can you stay depressed around me? I guess I can't. Mm. I can't believe you won an Emmy in 1996. I wasn't even born yet. What? If I dressed like a priest and carried around a giant cross, it would kill my dead Jewish grandmother. At this convention, I'm famous and sexy. Back in LA, I'm George Costanza. Oh, I think I might be falling in love with him. DG Armor Energize! Okay, you're my favorite. Arnold Schwarzenegger as a short order cook. That's right, put down the short ribs. What are you doing? <laughs> That's not barbecue sauce, it's blood. Here's to Adventures in Anime. Yeah. Yeah.